Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend, and welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. I hope your week has gone well. Well, guess what? My Bible is sitting open again. It's open once more to the book of Ruth. We are doing a verse-by-verse look through the book of Ruth. So why don't you right now, if it's at all possible, reach over, get your own copy of God's Word open to Ruth chapter 1. I'll begin to read at verse 15 here in just a moment. Along the way, I'm going to be talking about a gospel tract that's in my hand right now. And simply put, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a way to help people who do not know Christ as Savior to get the gospel, read the gospel in a vantage point that really helps them to allow the gospel to sit squarely on their soul and the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. We have a free sample packet of gospel tracts that I want to urge you to get from us, and I'll say more about that here in just a moment. So along the way today, I'll be giving five words beginning with the letter P, like in the word potato. So get a piece of paper so you can jot those words down. I think that will help you get even more out of the study. Now, one of my favorite places to preach from in Scripture is 2 Kings chapter 2, and that's the story where Elijah is taken up by a whirlwind into heaven. His protege, his helper, Elisha, has asked Elijah for a double portion of power with God. And Elijah says that he's been asking for a hard thing. The problem is not God's ability to give power. The problem is us, you and I, putting ourselves in a position to receive the power of God. Well, the story in 2 Kings 2 shows Elisha following his master from place to place, and at each location, Elisha is told to stay there, but he refuses. It's only, though, when he gets to the final location that his request is answered. Now, I say all that because here in Ruth chapter 1, Naomi offers, she really encourages Ruth not to follow her. That sounds like Elijah. Well, Ruth refuses, just like Elisha. Ruth is determined to follow Naomi and to follow Naomi's God, no matter where it leads and no matter what it costs. She's a tremendous picture of a person who genuinely is born again. And as I said, there's going to be five words, beginning with the letter P, that help to describe the commitment that we will see here in Ruth. I wonder, how are you and I doing at imitating Ruth as we follow Christ? Let me come back to that question in a moment. I mentioned the gospel tracks here a moment ago. And again, listen, God has told us to give the gospel to everybody. We cannot give the gospel to a wrong person. The trouble is that because of our lives and our limited uh, scope, that you and I have just one body, it's going to be in one place at a time, that sometimes we can't verbally tell the gospel to all the people we'd like to. So God has arranged for people to invent this little thing called the gospel tract a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's in a handy format that you can have with you in your shirt pocket, have it in your purse, have it ready to give out. I keep a small number of these in my back pocket with a holder that's there to keep them nice. The one in my hand right now is simply entitled Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. In the front picture, there are some of those famous merry-go-round horses, and you know what a merry-go-round does. It's a lot of fun, but it doesn't go anywhere. Well, a lot of people are involved in religion, and they think that being religious and doing ceremonial things will make them fit for heaven. It's like a merry-go-round. They feel good, but it goes nowhere as it relates to removing the sin stain from their soul. This gospel track just lays out clearly that it's not good works and it's not religion and not sincerity that makes a life fit to enter heaven. 
you must be born again. You must receive Christ as Savior. It's a great, clear, simple gospel track. Get it from us, please. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you our contact information. Give us, please, your name and address. We'll send a free sample packet to you. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and get that sample packet by ordering through the website. If your Bible's open to the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 15 begins this way, And she, this is Naomi, said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And when she, Naomi, saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left off speaking unto her. Stop, please, right there. I have frequently noted along the way that my title for this study through Ruth is this, Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. Now, what we have just read here has to be one of the boldest statements of faith in all of the Word of God. Ruth was a pagan, idol-worshiping lady. She was a Gentile woman. She openly here announces her faith in Jehovah God, no matter the cost, no matter where it takes her. Yesterday on the broadcast, we look at the other daughter-in-law. Her name is Orpah. She had an emotional attachment to the God of Naomi, but not a commitment to the God of Naomi. Ruth certainly did have an emotional attachment, but it's not her emotions that cause us to see her genuine faith. It's her clear and open ownership of Jehovah. She is aware that there will be most likely a cost for her loyalty. She's willing to accept that cost. Yesterday, I called Orpah by this title. I called her the kisser. My title for Ruth is the cleaver. We're told here in verse 14 that she clung to Naomi, even when Naomi urged her to leave. Verse 14 ends by saying that Ruth was committed to cleave unto Naomi. And that word cleave is the same Hebrew word that's used in Genesis 2 about a man cleaving to his wife and leaving his parents. The Hebrew word refers to a fixed and permanent bond. If you have a notepad handy, get ready to jot down these five words beginning with the letter P, like in the word potato. And as I said, these five words describe the level of Ruth's cleaving to Naomi and Naomi's God. Here's number one. Number one is places. That's the first one. Places, based upon verse 16. Ruth says she will go to the places Naomi goes, and Ruth will live in the places Naomi lives. Now, you realize who will be in charge here, right? It's not going to be Ruth. Ruth will be the follower. Naomi will be the leader. Oh, friend, when a person is genuinely born again, they become the follower of Christ. Christ is their leader. Are you allowing Christ to lead your life today? Word number two is the word people, still based upon verse 16, people. Ruth says that Naomi's people will now become her people. Ruth is abandoning her literal earthly family, and she's adopting a new earthly family and a people that she has never to this point associated with before. Ruth will now identify as a Jewish woman. Well, what happens when a person genuinely receives Christ? They openly identify with Jesus. The key act in doing that is baptism, water baptism. Word number three is the word person, still based upon verse 16. The word person, verse 16 ends with these words, thy God my God. That's what she says. Thy God, my God. Ruth switches her heart allegiance. Now, friend, all religions are about the same thing. They're all about man's attempt to gain a relationship with God. But the God of Israel was not like any of the former gods that Ruth had seen and learned about as a child. 
All of her old gods had images to represent them, idols, if you please. But now, with Naomi, Ruth is worshiping a God who won't allow idols. He's eternal. He did not grow into becoming a God. Jehovah is not able to be seen or touched, yet the truth about Jehovah has captured Ruth's heart and mind. She trusts in a God she cannot see to be the Savior of her soul and the caretaker of the rest of her life. That's faith right there. Word number four is the word perils. Perils based upon verse 17. Ruth's words say far more than what our English words communicate here. She is not only committing herself to a lifelong connection to Jehovah, Ruth's words here imply that no matter how dangerous it may become, even deadly, she will not abandon her allegiance to Jehovah. No matter what comes, what perils may come, she's going to stay with Naomi and follow Naomi's God. All right, words so far, number one, places, number two, people, number three, person, number four, perils, and now finally, number five, the word is parting. The word is parting, uh, still based upon verse 17. Ruth openly declares what can only be described as a covenant bond to Naomi and to Naomi's God. The only thing that will stop Ruth from her commitment will be her physical death. Now listen, my friend. When I was seven years of age, I asked Jesus into my heart. I received him as my Savior. I was born again. But I had not the slightest bit of, of sense about all the things that I've just given you here about these five words beginning with the letter P. Yet, along the way in my Christian development and growth, my commitment to Christ was tested. Let me ask you, believer friend, right now, let me ask you, are you presently at this very time in your life in a situation that is testing your commitment to be a Christ follower? Are you considering abandoning Jesus Christ, bailing out on Jesus? Perhaps, just perhaps, in the love and tenderness of God, Perhaps God has placed you to hear this broadcast today to cause you to see that you are not the first to be in such a place. You have a choice right now. Will you be a mere kisser? Because you, it's easy to have emotions about Jesus when everything is going rosy. Will you be a mere kisser of Jesus when it's easy? Or will you be a cleaver to Christ even when it's hard? Ruth was a cleaver. Why not take Ruth's statement here in verses 16 and 17 and use it as your personal prayer to Christ right now and say to him, Lord, I'm committed to you. I will die where you lead me to die. Your people will be my people. You're my God. Only death can stop me from following you. When you and I follow Christ with that level of commitment, the world will be changed. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.